Commercial 3D printers, they cost upwards of sort of tens of thousands of pounds and uh, our initial idea was to develop a printer that we could use, a 3D bioprinter, which was a lot cheaper and accessible to many research labs, not just ours. The, the idea came to again discuss it with a research group that we could use a very accessible material um, and that material was Lego. So we, we looked for designs of 3D printers and adapted that design then to um, incorporate our microfluidic devices uh, to be able to print tissues um, and cells um, exactly where we want. What this project has been all about really is changing uh, the work that we do from experiments in a two-dimensional cell culture to three dimensions. It's normal in science to grow cells in a layer at the bottom of a plate and to use those cells to study their biology, to study disease, and to work out how drugs work. However, in the real world, we all know that cells exist in three dimensions, and so our ambition was to create a three-dimensional architecture that we could use for our different scientific interests. Okay, shall I take you over to see the Lego printer? I should introduce Dr. Ahmed Mukachar, who's done lots of the work uh, on this particular printer. And this is the Lego printer here itself. If I take you to this small plastic dish, you'll see a steady flow of droplets coming out of the nozzle. And, and each of those droplets is a gel-like substance which contains a host of different cells. Ahmed and a number of other talented researchers and students who've worked on this project over the last few years have developed a, a range of different patterns that we're able to use and the important finding for us really is that we can get the, the resolution that we need using this simple, low-cost equipment in order to build tissues, potentially, that are extremely complex. So LEGO is a, is a very versatile construction toy, essentially, but it's built with, uh, manufactured to very high precision, very high tolerances, and you can build things with very high reproducibility from one build to the next, surprisingly high, actually. It's readily available and it's cheap. We also thought that it's something that everyone is familiar with, so students who are not necessarily familiar with engineering can get their teeth into building a machine and a robot out of a material that they're already very familiar with. So this enabled students from across a diversity of backgrounds to be able to contribute to building and evaluating this printer. And it's also a material that, because it's readily and widely available, the parts are all standardised, we could share a parts list so that other laboratories across the world could build an equivalent printer to the one we have developed. And in fact, we've been doing that internally. We've had new students come in and build a new printer to replicate our existing ones in less than a day. And that gives us you know, multiple printers that we can start further refining, further developing and doing further experimentation with.